There's nothing harder than being the child of a rich person in fiction. I'm only kind of joking by the way. I recently watched Jim Somerton's video on the tragedy of being rich. I recommend it but all you really need to know is that it goes over the tropes of rich people living tragically emotionally stunted lives because of their money and needing the help of a more emotionally stable poor person from a loving family to ground them. It falls under one of my favorite YouTube genres, video essays about TV shows I'm never going to watch. And that got me thinking about how rich kids are written in most media. But the thing that came to mind the most is the way they are written in Miraculous Ladybug which gives us not one, not two, but five tragically rich kids. Now Mr. Summerton's video doesn't line up perfectly with Miraculous because I wouldn't exactly describe it as having emotional support pause for the rich kids. Frankly I struggle to describe the other characters as poor, they are more well off middle class or capable of emotionally supporting someone else. Barnett's parents run what's probably the most successful bakery in Paris and you can make the argument she needs just as much emotional support as the kid whose father is a supervillain, if not more. The time she does help them isn't particularly that different from when she helps everyone else. But these are the characters that were more explicitly told have rich parents who live in mansions and luxury hotels and are doing business deals and whose problems pretty much mostly come from those parents. But really, Miraculous provides us with such a huge range of rich kids with parents who are their own unique pro flavors of terrible. Kagami is probably the one best off on this list. Her mother's hel a helicopter parent who has put way too much pressure on her daughter and has the audacity to tell her she's bad at art even though she's blind. But she is softening up. Turning into a giant center monster and imprisoning your child within you will do that to you. Adrian is the classic neglected child whose father is so busy making money that he's pretty much being raised by his father's assistant. The fact that his dad is also busy being a supervillain is actually surprisingly irrelevant to this point. He also keeps a tight grip on his son's life and exploits him for profit making him model in his fashion company which is really just another way he controls him. Chloe is even more of a classic than Adrian. It's pretty much Disney's favorite minor antagonist trope, the kid who harasses the main characters from a powerful family that we later realize has either been abused or neglected into acting that way. Zuko, Pacifica, Amity, Hunter, people say Disney has been repeating the wild sunflower girl main character trope so much that it's gotten predictable but we were assuming Andrea Davenport's family was like that before we'd even seen an episode of the ghost and Molly McGee. Frankly, the most original thing about Chloe is that the show has committed to keeping her a bad guy. And you know my thoughts on that. Chloe is actually a mix of a neglectful mother, leading to attention seeking insecurity, and a spoiling father, leading to a sense of superiority and self centeredness. And finally, the most put together and yet worse off people on this list Luca and Julika, who you cannot convince me were supposed to be twins before season 5 aired. I just won't believe you. Oh, their father is rock star and recurring character Jagged Stone, who left his family to be a rock star and who seems to have been placed comfortably by most of the fandom under the category of good person, shit parent. But oddly, I think it's the fact that they spent most of their lives not knowing their father is a superstar that's led to them being the most stable characters on this list, as long as both of their parents aren't involved, that is. And while I'm here I may as well talk about Felix whose mother doesn't seem to be that terrible and I'm not even sure she counts as rich but is also the most successful villain on the show so yeah. And Prince Ali is a prince but he's only on screen for like 10 minutes and is really just a plot device. I'd like it noted that it was at this point in writing the script that I remembered that Zoe exists. And while we don't know much anything about her dad, she does share a mom with Chloe and has serious self-esteem issues that make her change her personality for fear of rejection. Or at least she did back when she was interesting. Link in the card. I mean I get it, rich people can be such a great source of drama and if they become allies to the protagonist, they can also be a great source of resources. But I at least wanted to point out this trope I've noticed. I don't know if it's some sort of equivalent exchange, you get to be rich but you also have to be emotionally stunted. Or if it really is a case of the trope of how money makes people terrible parents and that it's the people who don't have too much money that make good families. But I wanted to make this video so here we are.
personally i think that it's partially related to characters like saitama from one punch man in that they are trying to explore the possible negative sides of something everyone wants but replace overwhelming superpowers with money if you have any thoughts on the topic please tell me in the comments while you're down there don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content thank you and good day